Let's now review one more time the concept of frequency and period. I'm sure you remember this concept. Frequency, the number of rotations per second of a rotating object is called frequency. And frequency is measured in hertz, which is per second. If the bunny makes 12 revolutions in 5 seconds, alright, I made it go 12 times in 5 seconds, then the frequency is 12 divided by 5 hertz. And the time taken for the bunny to go around once, or the time taken by any rotating object to go around once, is called the period. So, if the bunny makes 12 revolutions in 5 seconds, then what is the period? The time taken for one revolution is the time taken for 12 revolutions divided by 12. 5 seconds divided 5 revolutions divided by 12 seconds will be the period. Okay. Now, notice here that the period is the reciprocal of the frequency. We talked about all that earlier. So, during the period T, the angle described is 2 pi radians. Is that right? During the period, the period means the time taken to go around once. What is the angular displacement during one period? It's 2 pi radians. Therefore, you can say omega equal to angular displacement divided by the time. When the angular displacement is 2 pi radians, the time is 1 period. So, omega equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Let me reiterate it. That is a very important relation and you cannot forget it. We talked about it in circular motion. Can you tell me, can you give me the equation in terms of the frequency? Omega equal to 2 pi divided by the period, which is the same as 2 pi multiplied by the frequency. Okay. A simple problem. What is the period of revolution of a 33.3 RPM record? I don't think many of you would remember we used to have these 33.3 RPM records which used to hold six songs on one side, altogether 12. Now what does 33.3 RPM mean? 33.3 revolutions per minute. Alright, the question here is what is the period of a 33.3 RPM? If a disc make 33.3 revolutions in one minute, what is the time taken to go around once? You see? The time taken for 33.3 revolutions is one minute. What is the time taken for one revolution? It is 1 minute, which is 60 seconds, divided by 33.3. Is that right? So, 33.3 RPM is 33.3 divided by 60 revolutions per second. If the disk makes 33.3 revolutions in 60 seconds, then... The period is 33.3 over 60 revolutions in one second. Is that right? That's right. Now, that will be 0.56 hertz. And that is the frequency. You see? It makes 33.3 revolutions in one minute. Means it makes 33.3 over 60 revolutions in one second. The number of revolutions in one second is what we call the period.
I'm sorry, the frequency. Now we have the frequency, can you find the period? The period is the reciprocal of the frequency. So T equal to 1 over F, that will be 1 over 0.56, that is 1.79 seconds. Alright, what is the same quantity, what is the period of a 45 RPM? In the same way, 45 RPM, it used to be a smaller record, 45 RPM. 45 RPM means 45 revolutions in one minute. Therefore, it is 45 divided by 60 revolutions in one second. And that is 0.75 Hertz. Therefore, the period is 1 over the frequency, 1 over 0.75, that is 1.33 seconds. Okay, another one. We will now discuss the concept of angular acceleration. If a disc is rotating at uniform angular velocity, the rate at which the angle changes will remain a constant. We will say the angular velocity is uniform. But very often we don't come across rotations that happen uniformly. Very often we come across discs that are set into rotation. Now, you can see the initial, the disc is not rotating now. If I set this into rotation, its angular velocity is going to increase from zero to some value. That means the angular velocity is changing. If the angular velocity changes, it means there is angular acceleration. So, if the angular velocity keep on changing, then you have angular acceleration. You now see the rotating disk stopped. If the rotating disk is stopping, its angular velocity decreases from a high value to zero. So, when the disc begins to rotate, it picks up angular speed, angular velocity, the angular acceleration will be positive. When the disc slows down and comes to a stop, the angular velocity decreases from a large value to zero, the angular acceleration will be negative. Well, let's now talk about the angular acceleration of a rotating disk. We will represent angular acceleration of a rotating object by alpha. So, you can see we are using English alphabets for linear motion and Greek alphabet for rotational motion, right? V for linear velocity, omega for angular velocity. A for linear acceleration, alpha for angular acceleration. All right? So, angular acceleration alpha is the rate of change of angular velocity omega. In other words, we can define angular acceleration the same way we define linear acceleration. So, alpha equal to delta omega divided by delta t. The change in angular velocity divided by the time. And what is the unit for measuring alpha? The unit for angular velocity is radian per second. Divide that by second, you get radian per second squared is the unit for angular acceleration. Well, delta omega, if omega zero is the initial velocity and omega f is the final velocity, then delta omega will be omega f minus omega zero. So, angular acceleration results in an increase or decrease in the speed of rotation. If the rotation gets speeded up, angular acceleration is positive. 
and it slows down to zero, the angular acceleration is negative. If omega zero is the initial angular velocity of a rotating object, and omega f its angular velocity after a time t, then alpha can be written as omega f minus omega zero divided by t, and this is the same definition we have for linear velocity or linear acceleration. A equal to Vf minus V0 over T. Right? Now, a change in the speed of rotation means that there is a tangential acceleration. You see, the only way you can change the speed of rotation is to change the linear speed of every object, every point on the object. You see, if I want to increase the speed of rotation of this disk, a point on that, on that disk is going to move faster when the angular velocity increases. That means an increase in the angular velocity results in an increase in the linear speed of the object, of every point on the object. That means a change in the speed of rotation means that there is a tangential acceleration. That means there is a linear acceleration for every point on the object that rotates. I hope you understand that. We can obtain a relation between angular acceleration alpha and tangential acceleration A by using the relation V equal to R omega. Well, this is the relation between linear speed and angular velocity. We can now use this to obtain a relation between linear acceleration A and angular acceleration alpha. Well, you can look at this and tell me what that relation is. Well, the definition of linear acceleration is the rate of change of linear velocity A equal to delta V divided by delta T. And uh, let's replace this V by R omega. So delta V becomes delta of R omega, the change in the linear velocity, divided by delta T. And I can now take that R outside, if the radius is a constant, I can write it as R times delta omega divided by delta T. Now tell me, what is delta omega divided by delta T? Delta omega divided by delta t is the rate of change of angular velocity with time, which is angular acceleration. So that will be r alpha. So linear acceleration equal to r times the angular acceleration. In the same way as linear velocity equal to r times angular velocity. So these relations are important, we will be using them as we go on. V equal to R omega, A equal to R alpha. Okay, let's do a, a problem. A turntable 